in, in this use case, we're going to iterate over date and time. And the main question here is how to generate time slices. Uh, from the picture, you can already see I have a start date here on the left side for each iteration and the end date uh, on the right side. And here I'm generating time slices for uh, one hour uh, for a complete day. So until the end of 22nd of uh, September um, until 23rd of September, zero hours. Uh, when would this be useful? Like, let's suppose, for example, we have to uh, get a data from a database or from another system based on a date range. Then we can generate in time slices like this in a talent. I want to show you how. Uh, so let's head over to talent. Here I have got the job already. Let me execute this again so you can see uh, what I'm actually uh, doing. Okay, I have a start date where I'm um, kicking off from. Then I have an increment, which is increment uh, defining out how much it to increment uh, for which date portion. So it's incrementing uh, one hour for each iteration and it's taking maximum uh, 24 iterations, as you can see here with the T loop component. And when I execute this, I get uh, the output uh, that you can see here from zero hours to one, from one to two uh, of this day until 23 uh, of this day until zero hours of the next day. So I generate 24 time slices. Now let's suppose I want to uh, generate a different time slices. So I hit on run again and I can show you something else. Uh, let's now suppose I want to add 12 hours and uh, it should be still the hour part, but then I want to do that 14 times. Uh, so I cover a complete week with half day slices, for example. Okay, then I execute the job and I get the uh, corresponding results. So we're getting up to 17 uh, of October, zero hours in, in this case. Now I want to build that together with you. I've got an empty job here where we will do that. So let me minimize and this one. Here you can see I've got an empty job. Uh, first of all, what we're going to do is we are going to uh, add uh, the corresponding context variables. I have uh, four context variables. I used a start a date. And then I used a increment. Okay, increment. I used a max. And I, sorry, I used a date portion. Let's call that and like this, and I use a max value. Okay, the increment should be of type uh, integer, a whole number, and the max also uh, should be a whole number, so also integer. The date portion is a string, and the start date can be a date right away, because also this makes it available now for me here uh, in the context variables value field to pick a and date and directly okay here when i click now into this value field for my start date i have this um, kind of not really nicely visible uh, button here uh, i can click on this button and i get a select a date and time window like this okay for example i could select first of, Octo of october and then morning so it would automatically give me first of october 2022 in my case now midnight okay i want to increment by one for example and then let's say we want to increment hours. So for this, we have to know uh, the pattern um, part and that we want from a date pattern and then maximum 24 uh, times. So now we can go ahead and with these context variables implement our job. I've been using a loop component with a while loop. So first of all, I add this component, I switch it to while loop. And here uh, i is okay as the variable, as the variable name and uh, integer as the variable type. Okay, but I want to say less than or equal to uh, my context max value. Okay, so it's context uh, dot max. And then here we are adding a fixed flow input component and then a log row to show the date on the console the time slices and here I don't want to show that in table mode because otherwise we would get a quite large table for each iteration I just rather want to print the uh, column and name in front of each value uh, which would help to identify the data although it's in just one single row okay and then here in this fixed for input component I will have a schema of two columns which is the start and the end okay let's just call it like this start end uh, which is okay and both should be of type and date so i select this from the drop down and this 
And now important for the date pattern, we also select a value which is suitable for us. Okay, if we just want to work with the date portion, then this would be okay already. But I want to work with uh, this uh, pattern, which also includes our minutes and uh, seconds, um, which is probably a pretty common format, but it doesn't matter. It's obviously depending on your use case. And now I click OK uh, to confirm my changes here. Let me now go ahead and connect these components together. On T-Loop, I right click, row, iterate, goes to a uh, fix for input. And here uh, on fix for input row main goes to this logo component. And now here we have to put some uh, fragment of code. And what we will put here is, um, well, quite straightforward, we will use the uh, talent date add date function. It, it just becomes a little less readable uh, because we are going to use a, a context variables and other variables in here. Okay, but uh, what we're going to use is um, the add a date function. So I can type something like this. And we will uh, now, when I hit control space uh, at the same time on my keyboard, uh, see uh, not only the two possible um, invocations of this, but also some explanation here on the left hand side, which is quite useful. Okay, I want to use this one where I pass in a, a date, okay, uh, which is our context start date, and a number, which is our uh, increment multiplied by the uh, loop uh, variable. Okay, and for the start date minus one, and then the date type, which is here mentioned with a date is actually uh, our string, uh, which is called a date uh, portion, okay? So the last parameters type, as shown here in the documentation, is not correct, uh, but uh, that may happen. That's not really a bug, it's just a feature, let's say. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so here, let's uh, first uh, replace the date portion, which is context uh, dot, and then control space, and here we can uh, use the date portion, okay? Then uh, the my date uh, is also pretty straightforward. This is the context dot uh, start date, okay. And then here for the add value, uh, we have to put now uh, one uh, on the one hand side this increment, and we will multiply and this uh, by the current value of t loop. Uh, iteration, right? So how to get uh, this um, iteration value from the to loop component, you probably already know. Uh, we go, we are going to restore this outline view here on the left hand side. And here I've got this current iteration variable. Okay, uh, I place my cursor again here where I actually want to insert this. And I can write part of the components name, for example, t loop, and then I use control space and here I get the two possibilities where one is a current iteration. Okay, and that's it for the start date. But for the start date, uh, we will uh, always um, subtract one here before we do the multiplication. So what we will do is I will put some extra parentheses here after the multiplication asterisk. Okay, and then I will put a minus one here and close these parentheses. And then we can basically copy and paste this one uh, over here. Okay, but here we do not need these extra parentheses and neither these parentheses and neither the minus one. Okay, and for you to be able to see that a bit better, uh, we can show it like uh, this here. Okay, we have uh, basically um, I've split it into several lines here uh, for the start date and this expression and for the end date and this expression. Uh, don't worry in case you um, uh, think you have to retype it. You can take it from the solution if you want. Okay, here the first parameter is and the uh, start date and we uh, define what we add to this. Okay, here it's the increment multiplied by the current iteration. And then we define what a date portion. So for example, hours, minutes, days, uh, or whatever we want. And only as you can see here, we have a pair of extra parentheses, which is this one belonging to this one. And here inside the minus one, so that the subtraction is done before we multiply with this. And this way we get the start date and this way we get the 
end in the eight. Okay, here we are now ready to execute this. We can verify here we have 1st of October, 0 to 1, 1 to 2, and so on. And we go until uh, we have 25 executions now, uh, which I did not want. Okay. Uh, because here we're starting at 0, which should not be the case. So we should start at 1. <laughs> Okay, and then it should be fine. Again, now here we have 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, and then here we have 22, 23, and 23 uh, the 1st of October, and then here 2nd of October, uh, midnight. Okay, and what I've shown you in my solution was something like this. Uh, in order for uh, to be able to easily test this with other values, I just activated these prompt checkboxes here on my four context variables because obviously I could go ahead now change those values here and then run the job again and so on. But I can just now hit the run button and before it's actually uh, executing the job, it will pop up this window here and I can say, okay, now I want to increment 12 hours and just 14 times. So we have half day um, slices uh, 14 times, which is to uh, make a whole week. Okay, and then we would get the corresponding result here and we could put any other values. Okay, what would we maybe want to do? Uh, let's say we maybe want to add 90 minutes. Okay, so we put 90. Then here we have to put the date pattern for minutes. And then the maximum should be, for example, for, in, uh, for a whole week. Let's say a whole week has... Um, seven days, right, uh, multiplied by 24 uh, hours. Uh, this is the uh, number of hours and then the uh, this is the number of minutes and this divided by 90 uh, should be 112. Okay, so we get 90 minute portions for a whole week. Okay, and we can verify here <coughs> and that this list gets a bit longer. Now we go from 0 to 130, from 130 to 3, from 3 to 430, uh, and so on for the uh, 1st of October. And then we're into 2nd, 3rd, 5th, 6th, 7th, and so on. And we should get up to 8th uh, and 0, which is a midnight. And this way we're easily um, capable of uh, generating uh, different time slices uh, depending on what you may need. All right, and that's the use case to iterate over a date and time. Now, uh, please solve that yourself. Uh, send me your questions in the Q&A and see you in the next video.